Like it or not, pass keys are either already here or coming to a website near you soon. GitHub now supports pass key authentication. And as part of Cybersecurity Awareness Month in October 2023, Google now has also enabled passwordless using pass keys. But that said, there seems to be a lot of noise and confusion around what pass keys actually are, what they solve, why we should use them and how we should use them. So in this video, we'll try and address some of those questions and we'll go through the options around how we can create and use pass keys and possibly what a best practice might be at this point in time. If you like this content, then please hit the like button and also consider subscribing to the channel by whacking that subscriber button. Cheers. So to illustrate how we use pass keys, I'm going to use this passkeys.io example website. So I'm on a Windows 11 machine here. And so what I can do is sign in with my email account. And that says I don't exist here. I've never tried to sign in so I can sign up and let's just skip the create a pass key for now. And that is it. I am now signed into this site. So I can now sign out and sign in using my email and potentially a password. And I'm back into the site again where I was before. So once we're signed into the site and we've used our password and username, the site will then give us an option to create a pass key to make this authentication step easier. So let's go and do that. Let's create a pass key. You'll see at this point that this prompts us to use a security key or prompts us to set up a security key. So what this is actually asking for is some kind of external USB device that you plug in like a UB key or something like that. So on this particular machine, I can't actually set up a pass key because I don't, I don't have one. So at this point on this particular Windows machine, I am pretty much scuppered in terms of what I can do. Now, if your machine has some kind of security key embedded in it, so maybe it's a laptop or whatever, and it's got some sort of security key on it, then you may well be able to get past this step. But for me, and probably for most of us, this is what you're going to see so to illustrate what it looks like on a device where you do have the ability to create a pass key, I am going to use my mobile device. So here I am on my mobile back on passkeys.io. So if I scroll down and sign in. And so now I'm logged in again here. So let's try again and create a pass key this time on this device. And you can see that here it prompts me to create a pass key under my Smartmelon Systems user account. So if I continue to do that. It asks me for some biometric data. So I give it my fingerprint and that's it. My pass key is created. So now if I sign out and select to sign in with a pass key, I can select to use a saved pass key, give it my biometric data and that's it. With nothing more than my fingerprint, I am now authenticated into the website. So no use of a password at all. And this is the whole point of pass keys is that you don't have a password as such when you use a pass key and the authentication only happens on the device on which you're using the pass key so in this case the pass key never leaves my mobile device it's all authenticated using my biometric data and then signaled back to the website that i successfully passed authentication so that the website can then continue and assume that i'm authenticated there's a bit more to it than that under the hood but that's the basic premise and user experience, which is what we're trying to show here. So that's all well and good. I can use this website on my mobile phone, but that doesn't help me on a desktop machine. I'm still scuppered from there. So how do I need to make this work on a desktop machine? And the answer is that you can use either Bluetooth or a near field chip or NFC device such that the machine that you're on can communicate with your mobile device or another device that's external to it for the actual passkey information. So let's go and have a look and see what that looks like. So I'm back on my Windows 11 machine again, only this time I've got a Bluetooth device that's plugged into it. So my machine is now Bluetooth enabled and I've reset everything back. So if I go and sign in again, and now if I create a passkey, you can see it gives me a whole different set of options. So this is my mobile device, but I can select this use external device or tablet or something, and it gives me this QR code. And then on my phone, 
I can scan that QR code and open that up. And then Android will allow me to create that passcode on my mobile device, give it my biometric information, and then that communicates back with the website to authenticate me in. So you saw at the same time after I authenticated and stored my password on my mobile device that the website then got the communication back via Bluetooth to authenticate me in. And so you can see that I've now got a pass key that's been created, but it's not created on this particular Windows 11 machine. It's created on my mobile device, which if I go into Chrome and go to settings, and go to password manager, select my account. You can see there that I've got a passkeys.io passkey. So if I click on that, it just makes me authenticate locally. And you can see that that's the user account that the passkey is for, and that it is actually a passkey. It says you created a passkey to sign in. And this is how you can clear them off of your mobile device as well, by the way. So as you can see there, there's a delete button. So what this means now is that I can sign out of here, sign in with a passkey. I can just literally select my mobile device, I will get a prompt and I choose the account that I want to use. So my Smart Melon account, give it my biometric information. It communicates back and signs me in just like it did when I was first signing up, creating the passkey. And this is the experience that you're really looking for. So now this means that I can go to this site either on my mobile device or on any system, any Apple system. So if I've got Apple Macs, I can use exactly the same idea. So Safari also supports this idea of allowing external logins through QR codes and stuff like that. Chrome supports it. I'm not sure about Firefox. I haven't tried Firefox, but let me know in the comments if you've tried that. And so this to me seems to be by far the best way to use passkeys rather than using them on your Windows device or your Mac, I would suggest that you set up your pass keys on your mobile device. So one of the comments I've seen is not knowing where your pass key is actually stored and if it's synced across devices and this kind of stuff. So to me, it seems far easier just to use your mobile as your pass key vault, for want of a better phrase. And you've always got your mobile phone with you pretty much. So therefore you've always got your pass keys with you no matter which device you want to log into. So that would be my best advice at the moment. And that's certainly the way that I'm using pass keys. So meanwhile, back in the real world, how do we really use this? So let's go and have a look at GitHub passwordless login. So here I am signed in already into GitHub. So if I go to my settings and then go to password and authentication, you can see there's this big section in the middle around pass keys. So if I go and add a pass key, I can again Scan that QR code, continue to create the pass key, give it my biometric information. So exactly as we did before, and that's created my pass key. And so let's create this with a nickname of mobile or something like that. And we can see that my pass key is now in my account. So if I was to go and sign out of GitHub and then sign back in, I can just sign in with a pass key, select my device. I get my prompt, biometric information, and that's it. I'm into my account as fast as that. So pass keys are well worth adopting if you haven't already done so. And wherever you can, I would suggest that you use them. So I'm certainly using it for GitHub and I'm using it for my Gmail account and various other places. But let me know what you think. How are you using it? Are you using pass keys? Have you adopted them yet? And if you have, where are you storing your pass keys? Are you storing them on your device or are you doing the same as me and storing these onto your mobile phone for ease of use across different platforms? Let me know in the comments. And as usual, just a quick thank you to my sponsors for sponsoring the channel. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.